So in this screencast, we're going to continue our treatment of uh, nonlinear least squares solutions. So in this example before, we had some function of a, b, sigma, and mu, which we looked at how to, um, at least the mechanics of how to, to minimize that function with respect to <clears throat> those four parameters to try to fit um, our data to a curve, right? But in general, if you have any um, y and you want it to be modeled as g of x, which is a nonlinear function of x, that in a nonlinear way depends on these parameters, then we can use nonlinear least squares to attempt to minimize this function f. So you have some function f, and in this case it's a function of a1, a2, dot dot dot, am equals to some sum from i equals 1 to n, where you have n data points of epsilon i squared. And so you want to minimize that. Of course, this epsilon i squared is the sum of i equals 1 to n of yi minus g of xi. And of course, g of xi is implicitly a, also a function of a1, a2, a3, dot, 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 all the way up to m. And so what you're going to do is you're going to apply this, you know, the partial derivatives uh, with respect to a1, a2, dot, 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 up to am to this equation. And then you have m equations and, in this, and then m unknowns, right? So what you're doing is by um, solving for the partial derivative equal to zero for each one of those, you've changed this system of equations, which has, you know, m, uh, sorry, n data points and only m unknowns into a situation where you have um, uh, m equations and m unknowns, so then it becomes a square system again. So let's take a look at a very simple example calculating the Arrhenius temperature dependence of a rate constant. This is example 14.2. So in chemical kinetics, you have rate constants, like the first order rate constant, constant K, which is, in, which is in units of inverse seconds or inverse time. But these rate constants are not really constants because they depend on temperature. So according to the Arrhenius theory of temperature dependence, your rate constant K is approximately equal to some base value K0 times E to the minus E sub A over RT, where R is the ideal gas constant, T is temperature in Kelvin, and this E sub A is this thing called the activation energy of your reaction. So in the provided Excel file, we're going to use these data there to find E sub A and K0 by two ways. One, by transforming this equation into a linear equation and using simple linear least squares, and B, or two, <laughs> using a nonlinear least squares uh, fitting with solver, right? So, and by the way, the data were fitted assuming that K, or generated assuming that K0 was equal to this and E sub A was equal to that. So how do we tackle this? So first for part A, we have to transform this relationship into the equation for a line. So simple thing to do, you just take a look at this. Hey, this is exponential. So we're going to take the natural log of both sides. And what we get is the natural log of K is equal to the natural log of k0 minus e sub a over rt, right? And so in this case, to um, make it into the equation for a line, it would be plotting the natural log of k versus 1 over t. And so if that's what we're going to do, natural log of k versus 1 over t, then that means that the slope is, in this case, minus e sub a over r. So here, note the minus sign. I know that can trip some people up, but there is a minus sign as part of the slope. And the intercept in that case is b equals to the natural log of k0. So let's go ahead and flip over to our Excel file. And in our Excel file, we see that we have these data here. So Imagine that these are um, experimental data points where someone ran a particular experiment at different temperatures from 100 degrees C to 1000 degrees C and measured what the rate constant was for each um, for the reaction for each one of those temperatures. Now what we, what we want to do is we want to take um, these data which look like this and we want to try to um, put manipulate this equation into the equation for a line so manipulate the data properly and then fit these data to the equation for a line so that we can get values of E sub A and K0. So, and then the ideal gas constant R is equal to 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. So what we want to do is we want to um, manipulate this equation into the equation for a line. 
So we have to plot, instead of k versus t, we have to plot natural log of k versus 1 over t. So what I'm going to do here is for this, I'm going to say this is equal to 1 over this guy. Oops, but this has to be in degrees Kelvin. So let me go ahead and fix that. That has to be 1 over a5 plus 273.15. And this one is the natural log of k. So that's equal to ln of this guy right here. So this is natural log of b5. And then we want to fill this down to get the same number of points as before. Oops, how many points is that? One more. And so I've already made it so the plot would show up here. So right, so now what we have in this plot is natural log of k versus one over t. And so it looks like this, which is kind of like a straight line. That's what we were hoping it would be. And then what we want to do is calculate the slope and the intercept of this line. So to do that, we're going to use Excel's equation. So this is equals to slope of known y's, which is right here, comma known x's, which is right here. And there is our slope. Then we want to do, what we want to do is we want to calculate the intercept. So I'm going to just copy that text and paste the text right there. So I'm not pasting the cell, I'm pasting the text of the cell. And change this to, instead of slope, I'm going to change this to intercept. And there's our intercept. So from the slope and the intercept, what we want to do is we want to show what our natural log of k calculated is, which would be equal to the intercept plus the slope times 1 over t there. And of course, we want the intercept and the slope to have dollar signs because they're static. And then we want to fill this down. And I've already um, pre-populated this graph here with the line there. So it, you can see that the line does a, a very good job of fitting. OK, good. So next, what we want to do is we want to take the slope and the intercept. We don't really care what the slope and the intercept of this line are. Um, what we really care about is e sub a and k0. So let me go ahead and calculate e sub a from the slope, which is equal to, as I said before, minus the slope times r. OK, so there's our e sub a, and our k0 is equal to exp of the intercept, right? And so what we see is that uh, we have very, very, very good agreement between our calculated values of e sub a and k0 with the real ones, which is what I said the data were gener generated from, right? And I've already populated what the percent error of these two are. And you have very small percent errors. You have less than 1% error in both cases. In particular, in this case, the, it's 5 times 10 to the minus 5% error, which is really, really good. And so in this case, um, we have very good agreement using this method. Now, one last thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to calculate the real value of k from this these values of k, which were calculated here. So I'm going to say this is equal to exp of this value of k and fill that down. And you can see that this line, uh, this curve fits these points very well, which is what you would expect it to because this line fit those points very well. Oops, I realized I made a mistake because when I was talking about the Excel file, I thought that I had written down these relationships for e sub a and k0 in terms of the slope and the intercept, but I didn't do that, so let me go ahead and write that now. E sub a, as you look at what the value or what the slope is, is equal to the slope times the ideal gas constant r. And k0 is equal to exp of our intercept b, which is what I said before. Okay, and then from our Excel file, we found out that our slope is equal to 
minus 0 0.144. Our intercept is equal to 4.03. Therefore, our, our E sub A is equal to 1.20. And our K0 is equal to 56.4, which is exactly what we thought they should be. Now, there's also a part B to this example. And what we want to do is we want to use solver to get part B, right? And then solver will give us what are the values of E sub A and K0 according to solver. So if we go back over to our Excel file and switch over to the solver tab, which is the, um, it's called Arrhenius 2, is what the tab's name is. Then what we want to do is we want to use solver to do this here as well. So in this tab, we're going to have our calculated value of K is equal to our value of k0, which, oops, by the way, this shouldn't be c0, it should be k0, but it's going to be k0, times exp of minus e sub a over r t. Now what did I do wrong here? Oops, I messed up. This is not supposed to be t, it's supposed to be t plus 273.15, because it has to be in Kelvin. Okay, and so that is our value of k calculated from the actual values of E sub A and C0, according to um, what I want, what the initial guesses to be, right? So we're gonna start with initial guesses, but we're gonna use solver to actually find what um, solver thinks the E sub A and K0 are going to be. Okay, now one more thing. I want to make these static references for B21, which is C0, for E sub A, which is B20, and for R, which is F3. Good. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and fill this down. I'm going to make an error squared, so I'm gonna say this guy minus this guy squared, so just the same kind of thing that we've done before, and fill that down. And I've already populated what this sum is going to be. Now it looks pretty good right now because I've used the actual values of it, but what, what is solver going to tell us? So let me go up to solver and say solver. I'm going to minimize the sum here while changing the two variables b20 and b21, that, these two. All right, and when I hit solve, what's going to happen? Okay, so because I started with the exact right answer, it's gonna give me something very good. So let me try to start with something different. Let's say one and 40 here, which gives me a very different answer here. So let me go back to solver, solver. What is my solution? So it didn't actually give me a very good answer here. All right, so solver sometimes doesn't quite do it. You can see that it didn't quite work, right? And so solver gives me uh, something that's a little bit off for E sub A and a little bit off for K0. K0 is a little bit, little bit closer, but E sub A doesn't quite work, right? And so you have a percent error here, which is not quite as good as what we wanted it to be. Now, if we used uh, different values of starting guesses, then we could have gotten uh, better answers here. So let me go ahead and uh, stick that back over into our lecture. So the values of E sub A and K0 E sub A was equal to 0 0.97, and K0 was actually pretty much correct, 56.4, and the percent error is something that you can look at here on the Excel file. The percent error was a little bit embarrassing for E sub A, but not too bad, pretty much right on for K0. So in this case, what we see is that um, solver, because solver itself is not the best numerical package in the world, um, didn't quite do the best job ever at this. But on the other hand, when we use the slope and the intercept that we did in the on the previous sheet, oops, then it did actually give us a really good answer here.